Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by today. We have special guests. <laughs> my little buddy, my son is here with me today, the mead maker. That's right. He's here to help me today uh, with our wine. We're going to uh, actually put, uh, this is our first batch of wine. We're going to put the muscadine wine and the scuppernome wine into some buckets, add some Camden tablets to kill off whatever yeast is left. Not sure if there's any left, but uh, just as a precaution, we're going to put the Camden tablets in there, let it sit overnight, and then tomorrow, me and Kim will be bottling and sampling. And that'll be a lot of fun. What do you think? I think it'll be nice. Yeah, he's been making mead. I want to go over to his house and, and video some of the mead projects he's been doing. He's been really having some fun. I'm going to start on some new ones. Yeah, blackberry. Blackberry, strawberry, and peach. Yeah, he's had some really nice results with his mead. So, But this is our third series, our part three in learning how to make muscadine wine for the first time. This is our first batch. Let's put it in the buckets. Okay, now we're ready to bottle. We got our uh, wine taken from our carboys and put into our buckets. We have our bottles sterilized. We have our corks being sterilized. And we are ready to go. Um, yesterday we had to run, I didn't get a lot of footage on yesterday's uh, part of taking the wine from the carboys into the buckets. Uh, for the fact yesterday was my birthday and everybody shows up right as we started uh, the draining process or the siphoning process from the glass carboys over to the jugs. When I say everybody, I mean my grandkids. So everybody showed up yesterday and it was a madhouse. So I didn't get a lot of footage, but today it's just me and Kim. Uh, we're going to start bottling. We are super excited. Uh, we're going to be using the green bottles for the red muscadine wine and these clear bottles for our scumpernine wine. So they ought to be really, really pretty. Well, we ended up with five and a partial that we'll keep in the fridge and we'll sample with this and drink this through the, through the day, <laughs> no, through the month or so. But that turned out really nice. I like it. We got to cork it real quick. Let's, let's put a cork in it. All right. This is the first time I've ever used a cork. This is the first time I've done any of this stuff. We soaked our corks in star sand. That's what we've been sanitizing everything with, star sand. We sanitized our bottles before we... Uh, before we filled them, we sanitized our uh, siphon tube. We sanitized everything. This is a corker that we got on Amazon. I played with it earlier, <laughs> so I'm hoping it works. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it works. Look at that. Nice. Yay. <laughs> I am tickled to death with that. I'm using, uh, I, I heard it to the best cork to use uh, is a number eight size cork. For you guys that are wanting to do this for the first time, I think there's an eight and a nine. They said the eight slides in better, so I, I just did what I learned on YouTube. This thing we got off Amazon, everything we got off Amazon, the bottles, the corks, everything, the buckets, 
Every single thing you've seen me use in this three-part series has come off of Amazon. Super cheap. It's cost us about $100 for the entire kit. So it's really been cheap to make some wine. Another thing, I make it look like it's, it's really having a hard time going in. I'm just doing it real slow. I'm scared I'm going to knock the bottle over or bust the bottle. I'm just scared something's going to happen. So I'm just really taking my time and easing that cork in there. It slides in really, really easy. I mean, it's really super simple. I'm just taking my time. I'm scared something's going to happen. Six. Yeah. You on the counter? Well, it seemed like I get a bit. Okay. Yeah, like that. Well, that turned out nice. We ended up with a little more of the scumpernong, and I knew there'd be a little more, just there was more in the bucket, but we ended up with six full jars of scumpernong and a partial, and we'll have this in the fridge so we can drink it through the day. And it'll be a wonderful day. <laughs> All right, now for the sampling. Yeah. It's still got a little cloudiness to it. Look at me shake. Like <laughs> it's got still got a little cloudiness to it. But we're gonna buy a filtration system next year. All these batches I'm gonna do this year. I'm just gonna do it old school. It turned out pretty good. I mean, it's really really clear uh, for somebody to do it for the first time. But a nice white scumpernong wine. Keep that there. We gotta buy some little yeah. toppers. Well, I'm ready to try it out. What do you sure. think? Yeah. Let's try it. Hold on. I love the wine. Aaron says to listen. <laughs> Aaron said to listen. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I like it. it. Tastes like wine. Yeah, it tastes like wine. A lot of people, like my son. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos. People like to make a, a sugar syrup and they call it back sweeten it. Like yesterday when we put it in the buckets, they'll sample it and add sugar, or not sugar, but uh, well, sugar water to it to try to sweeten it. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep the just a pure, nice wine. Uh, I didn't want to make, <laughs> I was joking saying I didn't want to make Kool-Aid. But I wish that you would do that so like sometime in the future in the batch, batch because okay. I, I like a sweeter wine, not a... Like this is this is strong. I would like to try something sweeter. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next batch that we do, uh, we'll try that. We'll try a batch sweeten it and see to see the difference. Because I want to try different yeasts. Uh, I could say I try the batch sweet. I like that just pure wine taste. I'm not a wine drinker, but I can really yeah, start liking this. <laughs> I really like this scumpernong. But it's not as strong as when our, we first tried it mm -hmm. before we really mellowed out. let it sit. Yeah. Really, really mellowed out. The color is very, very pretty. The color. Look 
at that color. It's really it's very pretty. Really clear. That muscadine wine turned out super clear. I mean it really turned out nice and clear. I love it. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Cheers. You can smell that alcohol, buddy. You can smell it. <laughs> the scupper dog still is stronger, I think. God, that's really interesting. It is. I'm, I'm just loving the, the whole process. I'm curious how it's going to taste once it sits for so once long. Once it sits for a while, yeah. I'm wondering how it, it'll, it'll die down. Cause you, yeah. that, it's still got that heat. Yeah. This, it's still got that heat. I feel it in my belly. Mm -hmm. I do too. <laughs> yeah, it's really good though. I'm, blown, I'm absolutely blown away at the whole process. I was still, again, we didn't video it, but I was going, I was like a little kid. I was like, isn't this fun? It's so neat to take our grapes. I've always wanted to do that. Take our grapes and make a product. And like I say, we'll end up getting a filtration system next year. Me and my son was talking about going half and uh, going in half on one, where we could run this through some really fine filters, and it will make it crystal clear. But look at that—that that muscadine wine. I don't know how it could get any clearer. For us, just to rack it right. in a carboy, drain it out into a bucket. Fish we put and then. And it just compared to what it looked like when we first yeah. put it in, it was like that Pepto Bismol. Like Pepto Bismol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is nice. I'm excited. It's like about a rose. That. It's a rose. It's a rose. <laughs> it's an absolute rose. That is nice, though. I love it. <laughs> you look like you had a hard time getting that one down. Well, guys, I want to say again how much fun that was. If you've never made wine, give it a try. I'm going to start trying to make, uh, when strawberry season comes in, I'm going to make a strawberry wine. I like to make a cherry wine, a uh, blackberry wine. I'd like to, <laughs> I want to do a pineapple wine really, really bad. Uh, but this was a heck of a lot of fun. I had an absolute ball. And once you start buying your equipment, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, the carboys were really, really cheap uh, on Amazon. I got a, like two for $17 something. I, I can't quite remember the price. But when you get the carboys, they come with the airlocks. They come with airlocks. The buckets were super cheap. They were a couple bucks uh, for two. They all come in pairs. The star sand, I want to emphasize, you need this star sand. Anything that touches that wine needs to be sanitized. Um, the bottles. Now, the bottles, I think, were a little more expensive. I wanted to do a solid black bottle. They were really expensive. So, of course, you don't see the black bottles. <laughs> but the green, the blue, uh, they had a whole bunch of different bottles to choose from. Uh, they were fairly cheap. Uh, the siphon hose, I mean, just everything was really, really cheap. And I've learned through watching YouTube that you can buy fruit from the grocery store, from the farmer's market to make your own wine. There's so many different ways to make wine. Um, I have had a ball doing all this research and, and, and learning about making wine. But this was so much fun. I will be making so much wine. I'm addicted to it now. Uh, I'm going to be buying me a wine rack this week <laughs> to start storing all the wine. But anyway, I'll keep rambling. I absolutely had a ball doing this. This is part three. Go back and check out part two and part one of our whole uh, Making Muscadine for the First Time series. Uh, I really appreciate you guys checking out my video. This was just, I'm blown away how much fun this was. Love you guys to death. Do me a favor, subscribe, like, and comment. Leave me a comment. I've had a lot of great comments of people making wine different ways. I know there's a ton of different ways. But, well, oh, another thing is we will leave these standing up. I heard that we should leave these standing up for 24 hours and that the pressure inside the bottle will work out the, the, the cork letting the air in and after 24 hours we will store them on their sides. So I learned that too. I've been learning a lot of stuff with this wine making. Love you guys to death. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next video.